Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video part 30 of Spot Micro I'm looking at a new servo driver hat. So while looking at another potential project I found online I was on the Waveshare website and looking at a few of their different items and they have quite a lot of stuff on there I did find a servo hat for the Raspberry Pi so most of you will be familiar with the PCA9685 that we've been using to drive the servos within the uh, spot micro build and I've actually got one out of the box let me just turn on my camera So what I have is one of these and I've been using these. These were originally designed by Adafruit Industries and then picked up by a lot of different Chinese manufacturers who supply them in different variations. But these are, these are actually a very uh, robust little servo driver. Ideally what would be nice if we could just plug it onto the top of a Raspberry Pi. Now Adafruit did make one, a, a full-size board, some time back, and I haven't been able to find that for sale since. So I haven't uh, included in any of the Spot Micro builds. But I did find the Waveshare uh, servo driver hat, which is pretty much the same as what, or similar to what the Adafruit one was, but it looks like it was designed for a Raspberry Pi Zero. So I put the uh, order in, um, I placed that order on the 27th of April and they estimated delivery sometime between the 12th of May and the 30th of May. So come the 16th of May and yeah, we've had a delivery. So this arrived in the mail on the 16th of May, which is on the earlier end and what we have is our E variant oh we've got some screws standoffs they look like two mil screws I don't think they're the right size for what I need and if I can get it out of the bag So what we have is a servo driver board. It has headers that will plug on and extend up so we can get more headers to plug more stuff on. We have a connector on one end for power. That power is to drive servos, not feedback to the Raspberry Pi. And then they've mounted the servo connections facing out sideways on this variant so that there's room for something else to sit on top and all of our connectors for servos can plug in the front. This is uh, going to be ideal for mounting inside of a robot dog and we can then look at relocating where the Raspberry Pi itself is mounted to make more room inside there. So this will replace this that's currently next to the Raspberry Pi and make some room. So when we look at the uh, website and the wiki page for this, what, there is a fairly substantial note in here, which they did put in red. And that's to do with this resistor here. It's actually a zero value resistor. And when it's in place, you don't have to power through the connector that's over here, the VN and ground but it will draw off the 5 volt supply for the Raspberry Pi. Now, you need to remember that the Raspberry Pi is supplied either through some pins up here, as it is in spot, or it's supplied uh, via a USB. So you're not going to get a lot of power there to run your servos. So I would not recommend using it. But these boards are shipped with that 
that resistor in there and I can verify that on the camera and if I bring the board up you can see that resistor located just here so what we're going to have to do is remove that resistor before we install it into spot and then once we install in spot it will run exactly the same way as the old one did one of the things we will have to do when we look at the wiring for spot we have a lot of servo wires currently run to this board here these ones are stretched over they'll actually come back a bit which will be handy these ones will come this side and plug in that's okay but we have got this connector here that we will need to change we've also daisy chained a lot of connections through the header onto the raspberry pi oh sorry onto the pca9685 down here and we'll be able to remove that pca9685 altogether so this is going to simplify wiring a little bit on this board there are connections here if we flip it over you'll see that they're getting the right light eventually this will focus for me but we've got five volt ground sda and scl so all the I2C bus we want for everything else, like the LCD display in the back uh, and the MPU 6050, which I've got mounted up here. Let's uh, remove that resistor and we'll change some of our wiring around. Okay, so you can see that resistor is now removed. That means that these connections now will only be powered by this connector. Okay, so spot's currently powered down. Uh, recently, I had a bit of damage in some of the joints in the front here, uh, where the servos connect on and stripped out horns. So I 3D printed using the SLA printer a heap of the front leg parts. Uh, in fact, the whole front assembly I 3D printed using the SLA. There was a difference in the weight. Uh, it was not what you would call substantial. Um, yeah, so I found with the PLA, uh, the whole leg assembly came in at 368 grams and for the resin printed version it was 383 grams so it's not a it is more it is heavier but it's not a great deal more heavier uh, more importantly these things are more temperature resistant so one of the issues I had with one lot of prints on in PLA uh, some of the servos got hot in a position it was sitting in at one point and the PLA started to bend under the temperature. So the SLA will be more resistant to that. Um, so hopefully we won't have any issues there. I, when I was installing it, I did remove the Arduino Nano that I had plugged in the front. And I've also removed the uh, uh, voltage uh, level shifter for the serial communications and I may yet put that back in so yeah we'll see how we go so I've got I think that was the connection for the level shifter there and there and these two connected into the Arduino Nano that was going to be used for the ultrasonics I'm not a fan of how reliable the ultrasonics are, so I'm looking at other alternatives for that at the moment. Uh, there's also a, a bug. If you connect the Arduino Nano directly to the Raspberry Pi via the TTL serial, 
Uh, it's been found that when you reconnect to it, you sometimes have to do a hardware reset on the Arduino Nano for it to connect properly, which can be problematic in its own right. I'm still debating whether or not to leave the second PCA9685 in there. Uh, at the moment, I have nothing plugged into it. It's just connected to power. It's very hard to justify having it in there for any reason. So let's start by just disconnecting all of our servos for a start because we will pull the other one out. This one, by the way, is configured as address 41 hex and this one's address 40 hex. The new one here has addressing jumpers or addressing pads that we can change the addressing on. And just up here, turn it over, you can probably read it. At the moment, with them all open, it's configured for address 40 hex. Now, as you can see by the lack of lights on the boards, this is actually powered off. I wouldn't recommend doing any of this with it powered on. I might yet have to take the uh, back cover off to get to the power wires so I can uh, extend them a little bit or replace them with longer ones for the servo power. This is going to be problematic. So the MPU 6050, which is just here, is actually going to get in the way of this. So I might have to do a little bit of a rearrangement and I do want to put some standoffs here. So I'm going to chase up some standoffs. And I'm going to have to relocate where my MPU 6050 is located so that we've got room. All right, let me work on that for a little bit. Okay, so I've come up with a couple of solutions for problems I was running into. So the first thing I did was relocate the MPU 6050. So instead of mounting on with this screw, I've just moved it across a bit and mounting on the opposite side screw. That's given me just enough room to plug all the servos in. So once I got all my servos in and I powered up the board, I then ran into my next headache. And my next headache was simple enough. Uh, as soon as the system initialized the servos, it basically overwhelmed this small power supply little switch mode power supply built onto the board. Now it turns out that this switch mode power supply also supplies power to all of the servos. And when you consider that one of these standard servos can draw as much as three amps, and this little power supply is only capable of delivering three amps, and we've got 12 servos, it meant that it caused this chip to reset it supplies 5 volts out to the I2C, so it was causing the MPU 6050 to reset and also the display on the back, the LCD, uh, was also dying. So I've cut a track on this board just in here and I'll show a photo of that and then run a jumper from the track on the servo side under the board and directly off the V in. So these servos are getting whatever power is available from the battery and or power supply that I'm using. And that appears to have overcome that issue. I've, I could potentially have connected this zero ohm resistor back up. I've tacked it on the board on one of the pads where it originally came from off to one side so that it's not in use, but I haven't lost it. If I wanted to, I could refit that back the way it was. And that way, this VIN connector 
will still feed through the switch mode power supply. It'll provide through a secondary regulator down here, 3.3 volt for this device. It'll provide 5 volt for the I2C bus. And it could supply 5 volt for the Raspberry uh, Pi. Um, I've decided to leave it out because these two wires, the brown and the blue, are supplied via the power switch on the back. And by having that separate through there, when I turn this switch off, I kill power to the servos. I also kill it to the MPU 6050 and the LCD. So that works uh, the way I would like it. Ideally, um, I would like to have two terminals, two sets of terminals, one for power in and one for the servos so that I can run power to the Raspberry Pi. I can use it through its little switch mode power supply to run the MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit and also use it to run the LCD uh, and just switch off power to the servos when I need to. This has uh, made me look down another path. I'm looking at designing in my own full-size Raspberry Pi hat that has the PCA9685 and the MPU6050 on the board. So that will be a video on its own and I'll come back and do that at some stage. In the meantime, uh, I have replaced all of the uh, components on the front end so now I've got to go through and recalibrate everything. Uh, just a, a note, if you do change a PCA9685 as I have done here, so I've got, yeah, I've got one here. If you've been running a PCA9685 and you've got all your servos calibrated for that, when you switch to a new one, these two chips may have been manufactured in different batches and their timing may be different and if that's the case when you set these to a frequency uh, for example i had my clock frequency set at 54 hertz uh, for the cycle period the default for my robot lab is around 60 hertz so this was adjusted off a fair way in order to get the correct centering that is when you select uh, 1500 microseconds to go out through this, you should get a pulse width of 1500 microseconds on your pins. I only get that if I set this down to, or this one down to 54 uh, hertz. With this one, I had to adjust it to 56 in order to get 1500 microseconds out when I was setting it for a 1500 microsecond out. Now in the My Robot Lab world, when you set your output at 90 degrees, that's 1500 microseconds and that's what we set. So after installing this PCA9685, setting both these servos to go straight down, there was a slight offset. Adjusting it to 56 brought them back into line and sent it again. So with that in mind, I can now go through and calibrate these, which will be off a little bit. Okay, okay, that'll do for this video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. It's a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account, and you can join my patrons VIP Go Lucky and Lorenz Berger, as well as my... Builder Patrons, uh, Alan Morales 45 and White Wolf. I also have a Discord server. Uh, you can join my Discord community. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to either leave a comment in the video or uh, drop it into the Discord. I'm on the Discord most nights and I'll try my best to answer your questions. If I'm unable to do so, someone else in the Discord might be able to answer them for you. And we'll see you in the next video.